As we get closer to the city elections where we're going to select a new mayor, city council members, and controller for the city of Houston, we're back with city council candidate for at-large position number three, Michael Kubosh. Michael, welcome back to Texas GOP Vote. It's good to be back. You know, last time we talked a little bit about who you are and uh, in your politics and your background, but let's talk about the city council race now right. and, and what that, that job entails. Uh, the city of Houston is um, in some pretty strong financial situations and uh, what issues do you see are important in, in respect to that? Well, first of all, there was a long-range management financial report that was ordered by council, by ordinance, by the mayor and the council back in 2011. Now that report was published in, and it's on the website, if you'd like to see it, go to the City of Houston website, it's the Long Range fi management, Financial Management Report, and it says that our general fund balance is going to be deficient in the year 2014. What that really means is we're going broke. What's happened is, Bob, we have, we have deferred the pension plan payments. Mm -hmm. Many citizens don't understand what that really means. That means that instead of paying in as we had been, uh, were obligated to pay, we asked them, can we just defer it and put it off and put it off? Well, that's what we've done to the, to the fact that we're now deeply in debt. And so we haven't balanced the budget since Bill White's administration because that's where it started. In fact, this mayor, uh, Parker, said that Bill White paid the house note with the credit card. That's, that was a term she used and when she was running for, for mayor. But the truth of the matter is, while she was the controller, mm -hmm. an independently elected official of the city of Houston never sounded the alarm. In fact, she also had sat on city council for many years. You know, as a city council member, I believe it's my responsibility and in this office to answer to the citizens of the city. Not to answer to the mayor, not to answer to the other council members, but to answer to the people who put me there. Mm -hmm. As soon as that council meeting's over, I'll walk right out to that city cha that chamber and I'll talk to the press and I'll tell them what really went on in City Hall. Uh, you know, I've been saying in almost every campaign stump speech I've had that I'm an outsider. Put me on the inside and I'll tell you what's really going on at City Hall. Because I'm not afraid of those people down there, and you know, Bob, I've already proven that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm the only candidate right now that's in any race in Houston that has already beat City Hall at their own game. We had an election on Prop 3, and 186,000 people said no mm -hmm. to those red light cameras. But there's other issues that we have to stand up for as city council members. We can't allow the administration to keep shoving things down the throats of the people without somebody standing up and organizing the group to, to challenge it. Now, Houston is a strong mayor form of government, so there's a limited role that the city council members can play. How will you work with the city and the mayor to get things done that are important to get done and at the same time be able to block issues that that need to be stopped in the city? Bob, I think it's going to take building of a coalition, not just of the members of the city council, which would be ideal, mm -hmm. but they've already have cast their lot her way. So it, we're going to have to build it with the citizens. You know, I called a state rep years ago, Bob, on an issue, and, and uh, he didn't vote with the way he should. And I called him and he said, in fact, he didn't even show up to vote. He was in the restroom, he said. He didn't even vote. And then he said mm -hmm. to me, in this tone of voice, Michael, I'm only one out of 150. And I said, well, it looks like you're one we don't need. You need to get out. <laughs> you know, I've been listening to the radio today and, and Ted Cruz is, is being single-handedly accused of being responsible for shutting down the government. Mm -hmm. It's all over the news. It's all Ted Cruz's fault. Okay. And the truth of the matter is if one senator from the state of Texas has got that kind of influence at all, in, in Washington, by God, I, I'm happy for him, and I believe we need somebody like me to stand up at City Hall and to do the same thing. Well, I have to tell you, I can't wait for the first city council meeting when <laughs> you're on the council. I think that'll be a, an interesting sight to see. Well, the first thing I'm going to tell the mayor is, is that I have a covenant with 34,000 people who want to vote on whether or not it's legal to criminalize the, the, chair, the, the charitable giving to the poor and to the needy and the hungry in this city. And I'm, I'm not going to leave that alone because those people have signed a petition. I have a covenant with them. These people want to have a vote. And why are we afraid of people voting? Right. Absolutely. We need to stand up for it.
you know, the mayor, I think, has learned when she puts things to a vote that she doesn't always fare too well. Not against us. <laughs> especially when Michael <laughs> Kubosh is running the opposition. What would you like to accomplish in city council? What, are, what things are important to you that the city should be doing? Well, first of all, I want to change that ordinance. I also want to look at what's going on with the, uh, with the pension plans. We've got to balance the budget. Uh, and and we've, got, we've got to have some accountability for these TERS. Mm -hmm. We have to have audits. We need to audit them. And, and I'm not an accountant. My brother Paul's an accountant, and I know accountants like Bill Frazier. But the truth is, I don't, I'm not an accountant. But I do know how to balance a checkbook. Mm -hmm. And I am responsible for paying people on my payroll. And I believe it's, it's responsible government that, that only spends what the people give them and don't put the people in debt. And we're going to have to hold the people accountable that are in office right now. We, we need, you know, I wish there was a button that said no incumbents so people would know who they were. It would be an interesting tag. You know, there was a long time where if you had the word incumbent next to your name, that would get you reelected. But in this day and time, it might just get you tossed out on your ear. Might just do that. So we're getting close to the election now. The mail, early voting by mail has already started. Yes. When does early voting at, at the polls start? It starts October the 21st, and it ends November the 1st. Now, during early voting, you can go to any polling place that's open, and you can vote at any one of them, regardless of where you register to vote. If you wait till the election day, you have to vote in your precinct. So that's why I, I, I highly encourage everyone to vote early. And uh, this is the first election where Texas's new photo ID law is going to be in effect. So I want to remind voters that they are going to need to bring a photo identification with them. If you don't have one yet, it's time to get out and get one so that you can vote. We don't want anyone not able to vote because they don't have a photo ID. So um, want to see everybody at the polls? And, and remember this, Bob, that your voter ID address must match your voter registration card. Now, you don't have to have the card, but, but they'll have the address that, the, that you were registered to vote. So the ID must match the address. Okay, so it's important that people take steps early to make sure that they will be able to cast their vote when they, when they get to the polls. And right. I know the Texas Secretary of State has been working very hard on, on making sure people are educated about this issue. So uh, we want to commend them for that. And we'll see you at the polls. Thank you.